Indeed. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon to those of you in the East Coast. Good morning to Asia, I suppose. Today we are going to talk a lot about uh, forex trading sessions, so that's why I want to know uh, what are different time zones that you're in. Uh, we're getting more attendees and I, as I speak as, as 1 p.m. here in New York City. Uh, Let's give it a couple of more minutes before we start. I do want to go ahead and uh, take a look at the Forex markets today and, and any trading ideas for uh, any of you who is thinking of trading right now. But before that, let's see if you guys can hear me. Uh, can you please use the chat box on the bottom right side on your webinar widget and type in a Y for yes if you can hear me properly. If you can't, that's going to be a problem. Can you type in a Y for yes if you can hear me? And also, okay, thank you, Gigi, for typing yes. Uh, Bart. Bar tech, thank you. Uh, let's see how we can make this bigger so we see everybody. Okay, thank you very much. We have Re Riyad, thank you. Antonia, Christoph, Eduardo, and so many people. Thank you very much for joining us today. A uh, big day in the forex market. Uh, has any of you been trading today? We had a lot of volatility uh, with our currency pairs with um, economic data out of China and uh, Britain and bad data, retail sales data out of the U.S., which did push the U.S. dollar lower. And uh, so for people who were trading the U.S. dollar, they either won or lose, lost because uh, there was bit of a volatility. So top of the wire for yes, if you were trading US dollar today and you make money off the bearish momentum. Did anybody? No, we didn't have anyone. All right, that's a that's not a problem. We're gonna teach you when uh to look for volatility in different currency pairs and uh what are the best currency pairs for you to trade in uh what currency uh is the best for you. So I'm taking a look at major events today. As I said before, we did have the um, U.S. retail sales data that were uh, worse than expected. That pushed the euro-dollar pair straight up to our previous high to a 113 level. Uh, very massive uh, bullish sentiment. A dollar yen was also affected. Uh, due to this, and we had a massive 200 pip, a 75 pip actually move straight down, uh, moving into the New York session, and uh, we have pan, pound dollar moving up, not only due to uh, the the U.S. retail sales data, but also uh, because of the data that we're having coming out of out of the U.K. Even though we had some um, some releases in red, some such as the climate count change in the UK that was it came out a lot worse than expected at minus 12.6 thousand versus the expected 20.5 thousand uh, minus 20.5 thousand, uh, but that didn't actually change the bullish momentum that we've been having in the uh, British pound after the elections in the UK and. That could be basically the optimism that the um, British pound investors have been having. Um, governor Carney, Bank of England's governor, he said earlier during the London session that they're not in a rush to cut interest rates and they cut their estimate for growth in the UK this year to 2.5% from 2.9%, but that even didn't stop British pound from rallying quite a bit of time for um, for the British pound. We have a question from Mohammed. 
Okay, yep, everything is good. Uh, so a little bit more from the markets. The oil market uh, has been moving up. Obviously, as the U.S. dollar moves down, we know that the oil has a uh, com um, an opposite correlation with the U.S. dollar. So we've been having oil moving up. But one thing that we need to remember is for all the oil traders out there is that uh, the oil bulls who have been cheering the rebound of 40% from a six-year low should take a heat. And unless demand accelerates, this rally is in danger. And well in to um, 2025, actually, uh, Wall Street Journal was saying that the market, the oil market, would not see um, a break above $100 per barrel, which is quite interesting. Uh, in my um, in my uh, we had an update a report on investiva.com about oil prices, uh, which we actually said that the uh, 2016 outlook would be within the range of 45 to 65 uh, dollars per barrel, and we have been sitting very well uh, within that range. So. Enough about the markets. Today, uh, we are going to have an exciting webinar about currencies and how you are, how you can basically select the best currency pair. Uh, today's agenda, uh, we're going to have an introduction about Orbex, who has brought you here to this webinar about myself, your host, uh, and Investiva, our website. Uh, we're going to take a quick look on the Forex market and the common terms for those of you who are new here. And then we're going to jump in to methods to select best currency pairs to Forex trading sessions. And if we have time, we're going to have a live market walkthrough. Please do get prepared. Grab a pen and paper. If you are uh, multitasking, going through your Facebook and Twitter account, or even trading while listening to that to this webinar that's okay as well but don't forget to always interact this is a live webinar i am here to answer any of your personal questions trading questions that you feel like sharing uh here and uh don't don't be shy definitely ask your questions i'm here to answer if you feel this is too basic for you definitely go ahead and ask more advanced questions if it's getting a little bit too difficult definitely also go ahead and ask questions. Don't let any question to be unraveled because this webinar is for you and I'm here for you today to answer all your questions. Uh, so let's take a uh, start with Orbex Traders Library. Uh, it's a great place to uh, access all the data you need in your Forex trading. Um, we have videos, ebooks, infographics, trading tips, analysis and 24 7 there for you to give you suggestions and trading ideas this webinar is one of them uh definitely check it out through throughout your trading adventures and about myself my name is kiana daniel i am the founder of investiva.com i did not used to be a trader uh, i was an electrical engineer based in Japan, and I got introduced to the Forex market, and I was pretty damn excited about it. I came to New York five years ago to continue my Forex trading adventures and basically devoting myself to the market and educating people who are interested in the market and want to trade responsibly and want to avoid Trading forex trading like gambling. If you are here to gamble, I'm not the person for you. If you are here to seek for get rich quick schemes, I'm not here for you. I am here to teach you how to develop a long term ongoing strategy that ensures a quality, long term beneficial profits for your Forex account. That is what we're doing. That is what Investiva is all about. All right, is everybody excited about today's webinar? Are you clicking a, typing a Y for yes? Yes, everybody's excited. So 
Um, let's see, do we do, it seems like we do have some new members today. So I do want to go ahead and talk a little bit about Forex, the Forex market, the Forex advantages. We are going to focus on the major currency pairs today. Obviously there are over 200 currencies out there. Uh, the, you know, as many countries that we have, each of them, they have their own currency. Uh, but we are not going to focus on them. We're going to focus on the mainly, uh, on the main, like mostly traded um, currencies uh, versus the U.S. dollar. Those are called the major currency pairs. We're going to get into it a little, a little bit. Uh, but Forex, what is Forex? Forex is the art of making money by trading money, which is pretty cool. You exchange one currency, uh, wait for it to move, and you exchange it back again, and you either lose or make a profit. Forex market is the largest market in the world. Uh, $4 trillion dollars worth of transaction every single day 53 times larger than new york stock exchange alone pretty exciting the um only seven major currencies to follow that is an advantage because as opposed to stock markets or you know etfs and commodities there are thousands of them that you have to follow and keep up with but with the forex market there are only seven that makes it easier for us to focus and follow the market uh, big advantage, it never stops 24 hours a day, six days a week. It starts Friday night in New York, uh, which is the Asian session open. Uh, we are going to talk about the sessions actually today. So that is one word you want to keep in mind. And it ends Friday night. I'm sorry, it starts Sunday night. Did I say Friday? It starts Sunday night uh, in New York and it stops Friday night, Friday at 4 p.m. Uh, in north american session it moves in cycles it follows market psychology it follows the market news and the fundamentals and one last but not least benefit of forex trading is the high leverage but that you need to keep in mind and i cannot stress on this enough it is a double-edged sword with a high leverage it comes the benefits of uh, being able to take home a huge amounts of profit, but also if you are in a losing trade, that could be very, very risky. You could wipe out all your accounts. So before you um, assign that leverage to your account, definitely make sure you have done your research. You are in a very high prob probable winning position and then get into that high leverage trade. Uh, Forex market hours, this is the big topic today and the basically basis of how uh, you can choose a currency, the best currency to trade. We are going to go through all the currencies that um, are considered majors, but um, basically, so one of the greatest features in the foreign exchange market is that it is open 24 hours a day, right? This allows investors and traders of all forms from around the world to trade during normal business hours in their time after work or even in the middle of the night if you are facing a sleepless night. But not all times are created equal, although there is always a market for the most liquid of asset classes, there are different times when price action is, is much more volatile and there are periods when it is muted. So this time difference and, and, and the, the, the sessions actually comes handy uh, depending on the style of your trading, we are going to cover it in a little bit. But if you are a short-term trader and if you are a volatility trader, this sessions are going to become very important. What's more different in currency pairs, they exhibit different activity over certain times of the trading day because of the general demographic of those market participants who are online at that time. So right now, first, I would like to cover the major trading sessions, explore what kind of market activity can be expected over the different periods, and show you how this knowledge can be adapted into your trading plan. So we are going to uh, divide, break the 24-hour market into manageable trading sessions uh, with, you know, different considerable advantages for many institutional and individual traders. 
So a 24-hour trading, first of all, guarantees liquidity and the opportunity to trade at any conceivable time, but it always obviously has a down drawback. So although currencies can be traded any time, a trader can only monitor a position for so long, especially if he or she is a short-term trader. That does not apply to me, but I am here to uh, answer any questions for short-term traders. This means that there will be times that you are going to miss out on opportunities or worse, jump in a volatility that will lead in a spot to move against your established position when the when you are not around. So to minimize this risk for short-term traders, you need to be aware of when the market is typically volatile and then decide what times are best for your strategy and your trading cycle. I have been saying that this is very important for short-term traders, but even long-term traders, you can be scared. Like you can get into a, um, a position early in the morning with a bullish sentiment in the market and with in the second session, as the session opens up, the market may suddenly move against you. And because you're in front of the monitor, you can get scared about it. And uh, you may or may not, you know, play around with your stop and limit. Uh, so it's important just to know that the sessions uh, do play a huge role. And uh, if you're in a long-term position, why it is important for you to not get scared and not manipulate your stop and limit. So traditionally, the Forex market is separated into these three sessions that you see in uh, on my on my on my screen on your screen right now. So the the the, the three, at the at the um, opening of each of these trading sessions, the activity peaks, and the sessions are the Asian, the European, and the North American sessions. More casually, these three periods are, periods are also referred to as the Tokyo session, the London session, and the New York session. And I like to refer to them this way as well because I have actually been trading from Tokyo and the, during the Tokyo session and from New York during the New York session. I have never traded from London directly during the London session. But it, it does make it uh, easier to uh, refer to. Um, so um, these names are used interchangeably as well because these three cities represent the major financial centers for each of the regions and the markets are most active when the, these three powerhouses are conducting business as most banks and corporations make their day-to-day -day transactions and there is a greater concentration of speculators on time uh, online so now let's take a closer look at each of these sessions. Uh, I don't have uh, graphics available for this one, but uh, let's just, I'm just going to talk about it. So during the Asian session or the Tokyo session, uh, the liquidity is restored to, uh, to the market after the weekend. So Asian session is very important, especially during the first day of the week. That is Monday morning in Tokyo. In New York, if you are in New York, that is going to be Sunday night. It's going to be the middle of, an, of uh, like around midnight if you are in Europe. Uh, so that's why when the FX market opens in Asia, in Asia, the Asian markets are naturally the first to see in action. Uh, unofficially, activity from this part of the world is represented by the Tokyo capital markets, which are live from midnight to 6 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, but there are many other countries with considerable uh, pull that they are representing during this period uh, of time as well, including the very important second largest economy of the world, China, Australia, which is China's trading body, New Zealand, and Russia, among many more. So let's first see who we have in the house today. Do we have anybody right now who is in the Asian local time okay we have maria from china very nice that's it we don't have anybody in asian session all right so i guess i'm gonna limit my talks about asian session but now you need to know about it 
uh, because even though even if you are not doing the Asian session, if you're not located at an Asian uh, time zone, the Asian session could also be available to you when like during a different timing in in, in your um, area that you actually can trade. Um, so considering how scattered these markets are, it makes sense that the beginning and the end of the Asian session are stretched beyond the standard Tokyo hours. And allowing for these different markets activity, Asian hours are often considered, this is important, write it down, they run between 11 p.m. and 8 a.m. GMT. So if you are in Europe, you're basically screwed if you are not a night owl. So you cannot take advantage of the Asian session. But if you are in uh, the North American time zone, this can come handy and you can take advantage of the Asian session. Uh, the reason why we're talking about Asian session during our currency pair picking webinar is because obviously during the Asian session, the best currencies to trade are Asian currencies, Japanese yen, Australian dollar, and New Zealand dollar within the major currencies. Next, we would like to talk about the European session or the London session. So that is basically considered later in the trading day. So the trading day starts in Asia, starts in Tokyo, and just before the Asian trading hours come to a close, the European session takes over in keeping the currency market active. This FX time zone is very dense and includes a number of major financial markets that could stand in as a symbolic capital because we have London, we have Europe, the Eurozone, we have the Middle East aligned with it. So oil prices action can also come in during the Asian, during the European session. So official business hours in London, you want to write this one down, run between 7.30 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. GMT. Once again, this trading period is expanded due to the other capital markets, including Germany and France, before the official open in the U.K., right? Uh, so while the end of the session is pushed back because volatility holds until the London fixed um, after the close, um, the European hours are typically seen as running from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. All right. So the third and one of the uh, major sessions in the Forex trading hours is the North American session or the New York session. So by the time the North American session comes online, the Asian markets have already been closed for an number of hours but the day is only halfway through for european trades so this is the best time to trade the euro crosses versus the dollar so that is why euro dollar and pound dollar are the most traded currency pairs during this hour because both the london the london markets and the new york markets are open right so it is the uh, second half in the in the euro, but it's the first half in New York. Tons of volatility, tons of opportunities. The Western session is dominated by activity in, in the U.S. with few contributions from Canada, Mexico, and a number of countries actually in South Africa. So that's why it comes as a little surprise that activity in New York City. Uh, marks the high in volatility and participation for this session. Uh, even though actually Forex is not as popular in the U.S., but it is very popular around the world, uh, trading-wise uh, and session-wise. So taking into account that the early activity in financial futures, commodity trading, and the concentration of economic releases in North American hours, hours unofficially begin at noon. GMT, right? Um, so there is a considerable gap between the close of the U.S. market and the open of the tra Asian trading. So there is a lull in liquidity sets that the close in New York Stock Exchange 
uh, training at 8 p.m. GM GMT as the North American session closed. So these were basically the three important sessions in the Forex market and the correlating uh, major currency that you can trade during these sessions, especially if you are a short-term trader or you're seeking volatility. All right. So next, we are okay. Let's actually first ask, do we have any questions up to here before we move on to our next slide? Everything seems good. Okay, so um, we are going to cover five methods on how to select the best currency for you. First, let me tell you this. There is no best currency for everybody. Like, you cannot say, okay, the best currency to trade is the euro, period. No, that is not true. The euro could be a good currency to trade for someone for... Uh, Derek, this could be actually a very bad currency to trade because, first of all, he doesn't know anything about euro. I'm just speaking metaphorically, Derek. Uh, but, um, uh, yeah, I, I called you out because you, you're appearing not active on my, uh, on my, uh, on my web, web chat. Uh, but it could be a great currency for Anna because she knows a lot about the Eurozone, the uh, European economy, or maybe she's from Greece, right? Uh, so there is no single currency that is the best for everyone. But I'm going to give you five methods, general methods, on how to pick the best currency uh, at a certain time that is going to work for you. Uh, for example, uh, again, if I say, for example, New Zealand dollar is the best currency for me, that doesn't mean that I'm going to trade the New Zealand dollar at all times. I will trade the New Zealand dollar when it seems right for me based on one of these methods, and I might move on to the next best currency uh, afterwards. Uh, so let's go through them. So the factor one is the strategy type, what kind of strategy you are. Factor two is the currency correlations. Factor three is reliance on only one currency. And factor four is mixing your strategy or portfolio. And finally, are the tools and indicators and what they have on tap for your trading. So factor one, strategy type. So when I wake up every morning and I start trading, I want to decide I first go through all the major currencies that I have open on my platform and try to find either trends or ranges. There are two ways of making money in the forex market, when the market goes up and when the market goes down. Uh, I can see that uh, Derek had a question. Let's see. Uh, Asian session. All right. So Bar Bartik was saying Asian session is boring for European traders. Um, okay. Uh, yep. Because you are going to be basically um, sleeping at that time, right? Um, so if you are, so I, I basically open up my uh, platform and see if I'm seeing uptrends, downtrends, or ranges. And then I decide if I want to enter a short term trade or a long term trade. And then I decide if I want to range trade or uh, trend trade, basically. Right? So um, based on that, if you, so for me, it really doesn't matter. I go with the flow. Some people, they are strictly trend traders or strictly range traders. And that is why, for example, at right now, at this point, I am going to bring up my platform uh oh out hold on one second uh, i want to walk you through my uh forex trading account because i believe that is going to be, be the best way to show you uh how you can do it because there is no if i tell you that okay you can be a 
you have to be a range trader, you have to be a trade, trend trader, that is not gonna make any sense. But uh, let's walk you through over my account. I have shut out my screen for a, for a second, just so that I can bring up my trading platform. I'm gonna show you my trading platform right now. Okay, uh, let's see which screen you're seeing. Okay, this is the screen that you're seeing. So for example, uh, he, this is my dollar yen. Uh, this is basically the dollar yen chart, right? So Bartik was saying that Asian session is boring for European traders. But the matter of the fact is, even if you are in the Eurozone and you decide that you do want to trade the, you, uh, the, the Japanese yen, that could very easily work out for you. The reason for it being that, look at now, right now the dollar yen has been ranging. It has been ranging forever. It has been ranging since December. And it has been ranging between these uh, important levels of 121 and 116. It has been going up and down. The volatility has been decreasing. The market has been uh, being squished into a, a symmetrical triangle pattern. So we are expecting actually a breakout anytime soon, but still this doesn't mean that for a range trader there is no opportunity. Uh, during the end of London session, for example, you can actually get into a either buy or a sell position on the dollar yen pair, uh, let it mature for a couple of days, and it's probably because it's ranging, it's probably gonna uh, reach your target in either way at some point. And we've been actually having a lot of success. It has been zigzagging, as you can see. Uh, so, for example, if you enter the market in a bearish uh, sentiment over here uh, and set your um, target, your bearish target at 119, you would have made money, uh, you know, here or here. Uh, then again, if you, you can see the zigzag, you can see what I'm talking about. So, regardless of the session, if you are a range trader, a ranging currency pair at the moment could work out for you, right? But this doesn't mean that the dollar yen pair is always ranging at all times. Look at the history of dollar yen. So if you look back to the um, uh, technical chart, you can see that the dollar yen has this tendency of consolidating, ranging, going, and then trending. Ranging for three months and then trending ranging and then trending and most of the times more often than not those trends fall perfectly into triangles and that is when you know the market is going to break out at this point for example our triangle has been forming we have been ranging for quite a while for a, for about six months actually or i would say like yeah six months so we are expecting definitely a breakout uh, of this triangle which is going to set our uh, next trend, which brings us back to trend traders. So, as I said, this all depends on what type of a, what type of a trader you are. Are you a trend trader? Are you a range trader? Range traders best currency best currency pair to trade right now is dollar yen. A trend trader, however, we have a different uh, scenario. Let's see. Do we have any trend traders in the house? Okay, we have Muhammad, who's a trend trader, who's probably not very fond of, um, of dollar yen at the moment. Any other trend traders? That's all about it. Do we have any range traders? Maria, all right. So you've been uh, taking advantage of the uh, Kiwi dollar. Yes, uh, Kiwi dollar has been ranging as well. Very good shout out. Uh, we have been ranging, Kiwi dollar has also been, Kiwi is the New Zealand dollar, also in the Asian uh, market, which has been ranging. So any person in the European uh, time zone or the New York time zone uh, who is a range trader could take advantage of these currently ranging markets, uh, the New Zealand dollar, the Japanese yen, and uh, the Aussie dollar seems to have uh, broken out of its range uh, to the upside. So that could be a good Asian currency to trade 
uh, for a trend trader. All right, uh, let me go through other major currencies again for strategy type uh, between the tr um, trend and uh, range traders. So do um, Aussie dollar, uh, any trend trader who is interested in the Asian currency should have their eyes open because we had the Aussie dollar breaking above uh, the 23% Fibonacci level. We have a request uh, on dollar. Oh, all right. Uh, let's see if I can find that. Actually, I'm not sure if I uh, come with my uh, platform uh, offers that. Hold on one second. I'm going to get back to your question, Bardic. Uh, definitely, let's go through the majors first. Uh, we have dollar cat, uh, which this is the four hour. Oh, obviously. Short term trading and long term trading. Right now, we're covering only daily. Uh, this is the dollar cat four hour. We don't want that. We want the dollar cat daily. Where is it? If I can find it, there it is. All right. So the dollar cat uh, has also broken below its range. It is moving down with the dollar uh, moving below the R pivot levels and below the 23%. Financial level, so it could be a good time again for a trend trader to uh, open up their eyes and watch out for trending uh, the dollar cat towards the 50% uh, Fibonacci level, right? So that was for dollar cat. Then we have the euro dollar. Let's see where is that euro dollar daily? You see it. There it is. Okay, this is not a good one. Uh, we want a euro dollar daily. There it is. All right, so our euro dollar also has broken above its range. Uh, good opportunity for range trader for for trend traders. Uh, but actually, no, we still are not sure about euro because it's still testing the 23%. So very important times for any strat strat strategy uh, on a long term because. Uh, we could have a breakout on major currencies, especially in the U.S. dollar in the coming days. British pound definitely trending up. It has broken above major resistance levels, which could bring it up uh, towards the 50% and 61% uh, for natural level. The RSI is heading up. So uh, this is how you can basically... This was an overall. Uh, I'm going to... I know I've been being a little bit uh, too all over the place uh, because that is how you should trade. It's not all about uh, your strategy. It's also about what is going on in the market. So after you have developed uh, your preference on being a trend trader or a range trader, let's see if you can see my uh, screen properly. Yes, you can. Uh, okay. Uh, the next factor is... Uh, major currency pairs, we already went through them, the ones that you saw. This is how we uh, refer to them at the Investiva education course. Uh, I like to think that the currencies are couples, uh, international couples who dance on the Forex dance floor. So we have Miss USA, who is a woman, who he, she dances, basically she takes turns dancing with each of these uh, currencies from other major com countries. So we have Mr. Euro and Miss USA. Uh, you can consider Miss USA as the prom queen who she dances with all these major currencies and uh, she basically drags them all over the Forex dance floor. I refer to, for, to the Forex trading chart as the Forex dance floor just to make it a little bit more fun to trade. So major currency pairs are the Euro dollar, dollar yen, pound dollar, Kiwi dollar, dollar cat, Aussie dollar, and dollar Swissy. Of course, obviously, we have the minor currency pairs that are the mix and match of these, uh, yes, I do trade cross trades. Um, uh, so here I'm only showing you the major currency pairs. The cross trade, the uh, cross currencies are mixing and matching uh, euro, for example, with the Swiss franc, uh, Australian dollar with Japanese yen. Anything that does not include the US dollar is considered to be the minor currency pair or a, the cross pair. Also, very, very important. Uh, part of currency trading. Obviously, 
uh, trading, those currency pairs are more popular when you are not in the New York, uh, North American time zone. Uh, Anna is asking, is trending strategy usually long-term investment while range? Yes, very, very good observation. A trending strategy, especially when you um, uh, identify a long-term trend, if you identify a bottom out uh, of a long uh, of a cycle, uh, is considered to be a very good strategy for long-term traders. Uh, I myself sometimes am in a trade uh, on a trend trade for over two months or even three months for that matter until it uh, maximizes and matures its trend. I sometimes I have a tendency of getting out of the market a little bit uh, earlier because I don't want to be greedy uh, and uh, I basically choose my stops and limits a little bit lower than a normal uh, market analyst because you want to get out of it before it changes directions. Range trading, uh, you're obviously going to exit faster because the market is uh, ranging. You have to be uh, more glued to your uh, basically trading platform to your computer screen uh, because any moment the range could be broken out and you don't want to either miss out on a trend opportunity or you don't want to lose money on the opposite direction. Obviously, if you have set your stops and limits properly, you can also trend in any trading session and be uh, and fall asleep and uh, don't care about uh, the um, sudden changes in the market. I'll give you um, a, uh, an example. For example, uh, the dollar Swiss, when the Swiss franc uh, suddenly rallied in four minutes, three, four, I guess 500 pips in a day, that was back in January 15th, I did have a position open. Um, and because I, I was sleeping when that happened, but because I'm in New York time and that happened over the London session, I woke up and I saw a loss in my uh, trading platform, in my, in my position. But thankfully, I had set a stop loss uh, and I only lost uh, on about 100 pips, which was not a big of a deal for me because I still had enough equity and enough margin to continue on with the rest of my trades. All right, so um, the next factor are is reliance on one currency. I have a good friend who is also an author uh, of a uh, Forex book who only and only trades the Aussie dollar. And um, that is, again, a, it could be... It, it all comes down to your personality. If you do not feel like going and researching on all these different currency pairs and you know about that specific currency and its cross and its uh, currency cross, and you want to continue observing it and you wake up every morning, you know you, ex you know exactly what economic data is gonna uh, come out of the country and uh, you're familiar with its movements and you're familiar with its tendencies, then yes, you can rely on one currency pair and only trade that one. That means that would mean trading one position at a time, uh, which is pretty uh, risk averse. I do recommend to people who are uh, not trading currency trading as their main, as their main career. If you have a uh, main career that you have to work at, I don't know, from nine to five, and you want to make some money on the side and you don't have time to be uh, on top of all the uh, economic data that are re released on ev 24 hours, 24 hours a day, then yes, that is going to be the right strategy for you. Uh, this also can mean that, uh, for example, for me, dollar yen is one of, so I have actually three favorite uh, currency pairs uh, and they all are the uh, major currency, a dollar cross versus uh, an Asian currency. So my favorite currency pairs are dollar yen, Aussie dollar, and New Zealand dollar. It is because probably I lived in Japan for seven years. I know uh, about their economy. I have lived in the U.S., so I know about the U.S. economy uh, inside and out. So dollar yen is a very... Uh, comfortable. It's a comfort zone for me because uh, I know what to expect. I know the political figures. 
And I know I have been following it for years and years. And I know the tendency, right? Aussie dollar, uh, my husband is Australian. So he talks to me a lot about, you know, the simple facts in within Australia. So I know things that people in America probably don't know about Australia and Australian economy, uh, things that probably Europeans don't know about Australia and Australian economy. That's why, that's why Aussie dollar and New Zealand dollar are also my favorite pairs. Uh, if you are in the Eurozone, if you know a lot about European uh, countries, if you're in any of the countries, if you're in Germany, if you're in Cyprus, uh, and you know a lot about uh, the economy, then uh, that means Euro could be a good currency for you to trade. If you're in the Eurozone, then that means that probably Euro versus the um, British pound could be a good pick for you because uh, they are both in your time zone. You more or less hear about them on your news channel all day long. So you can do that as well. So that is that strategy. You can rely on only one currency and there is nothing wrong with that. Don't feel the pressure if your broker or like your analysts or people that you're following on Twitter are pushing you to trade all the currency pairs at all times. Uh, don't feel pressured. Don't think that that's the only way to trade. Uh, this is the quote of the day. I definitely want you to write this down. More trades does not guarantee more winning positions, right? So you can be in only one position for two months and make 400 pips, uh, but you can take 50 different trades and lose them all and not make enough money, right? So that is one other uh, trading strategy for Especially, uh, I would rely on one currency, especially if I'm only uh, trading the dollar crosses. Because, for example, let's say I'm bullish on dollar yen, uh, but I think that the U.S. dollar is going to go down. Uh, that basically means that I'm hedging against myself. So I'm bullish on dollar yen, but I'm also bullish on Aussie dollar, which means I'm bearish on U.S. dollar. So I'm bullish on U.S. dollar in one trade and bearish on U.S. dollar in another trade. Sometimes that actually does work out well. Sometimes, other times, it doesn't. Uh, so you have to be wary about the, you have to be um, uh, basically on top of that as well. Uh, and uh, so let's actually see if we have any other questions over here. No, everything seems good. We have 10 minutes. I really do want to go uh, take you live. So um, factor four is the strategy mix and your portfolio, right? So I briefly showed you, and we have covered the technical strategies and the technical mix. Uh, up until now, all our strategies revolved around the fundamentals and the economic sessions and the uh, hour and the time zone zones and the markets. Uh, but not another factor and the, one of the important um, Factors are the technical analysis and your strategy mix. Of course, if you're trading with a single strategy, then this factor is irrelevant. But for those that trade multiple strategies, this is smart to analyze whether your strategies are not over reliant on the same or correlated currency pairs. Uh, even though the strategies are different, there could be increased risk associated with trading the same pair from a portfolio perspective. Uh, so when it comes to tools and indicators, Selecting the best moving currency pair depends on choosing tools and indicators. So the most important factor is that you gain experience with tools and indicators of your choice. And I want you to keep in mind that no indicator or tool is 100% perfect, nor will it be ever be accurate in the future. It is your knowledge, familiarity with the uh, uh, familiarity with your practice. Uh, that gives you the edge, basically, right? But obviously, there are useful tools and indicators that we've covered before. Uh, I My favorite ones are Fibonacci, Ichimoku, trend lines, moving averages. And using a combination of these tools and indicators can uh, give you a better cl clarity to identify uh, the best currency page trade at a given time. Uh, together with spotting patterns, uh, you know, such as chart patterns and candlestick patterns and trend patterns and reversal patterns, these can all help you gain a bigger edge when trading. Right. So what I mean by that, 
uh, that means when I open up my uh, currency, my, my platform, my trading platform, uh, I don't have a bias. That is, again, personally me. I mean, let's say that you are a single trade, single currency pair trader and you only and only trade the euro dollar pair. That doesn't mean that you have to be trading at all times. You have to mix and match your uh, indicators and portfolio and your strategies in wait for the right time uh, to enter a trading uh, position. So we have a question studies in Japan and Korea in the U.S., Dollar yen sentimental parry. Yes, that's exactly me. Uh, I, I have, I you know, I'm I'm pretty fond of the uh, of the dollar yen pair, and it's pretty obvious why, right? But let's say that you are not in any of the. Uh, I'm I'm talking to you, Bart. Uh, Bart, I'm gonna just shorten your name for Bart. Um, if you're not in any of these major countries, um, let's say you're in Saudi Arabia or you're in, uh, I don't know, Iran or Cyprus. Uh, still you may or may not have better access to a certain currency or maybe you've traveled to a, to Europe or Japan that you um, basically favor one of these currencies uh, as, as opposed to other currency pairs, right? Anyways, back to our strategy mix and portfolio. That was our factor four. Uh, I'm gonna walk you through it. If we have time, we have like five minutes left. Uh, how you mix and match strategies uh, before you select a trading uh, a currency pair for your trading of the day. Ah, oh, what happened to my factor five? I don't have it here. Okay, uh, I forgot to include it. Um, uh, so the factor five that I forgot to include in the uh, in the webinar in the in my um, uh, PowerPoint over here was currency characteristics. Uh, so Selecting the best moving pairs depends on the behavior of the pairs versus your own psychology and your own strategy, right? So certain currency pairs are great in trending modes, such as euro versus the Aussie dollar, and others are well suited for scalping due to their expected volatility, such as uh, British pound versus the Japanese yen in a short term. Right? And there are some slower moving pairs that are could be a good match for part-time traders like euro versus the pound. Each currency pair has its own particular and characteristics. Uh, for example, uh, currency correlation is also something that you wanna you wanna keep in mind. For example, normally under normal conditions, the euro uh, correlates with the British pound. This obviously is not true at current times because actually the euro and the pound has been going in opposite direction the past few weeks. Um, but normally, under normal conditions, they are correlated. Uh, so if you are familiar with that characteristic, you can actually have a double uh, mix and match. So you can have euro, do euro dollar and pound dollar both uh, trading positions on if you think that both euro and pound are moving up or in a, in a rally, right? So you can double your, double your uh, profits and double your wins by being in a, a correlated uh, double position. Uh, right, and so uh, so some of them will go along more with you and your trading strategy than others. So ultimately, what my point is is that uh, you should keep in mind all these uh, aspects of currency pairs. You have to be aware of your psychology in the best times that work for you. If you are, uh, if you work best if you if your brain works best uh, early in the morning and you are in Europe then you might want to consider trading a European currency uh, if you're a night owl or if you want to uh, trade after hours and you are in uh, North America you would you might want to consider Asian currencies and if you are a long-term trader and you don't care about the Asian uh, the, the, the uh, time zones, uh, you might want to focus on uh, the strategy mix, on the currency pair that you know more and more comfortable with trading, and uh, obviously always and always setting your stops and limits properly. Let's walk you through my platform uh, before the session is over. Uh, hold on one second. I'm going to show you my screen in a second. This is going to be basically a continuation of what we were talking about before. 
So what I mean by mixing and matching strategies is that, so right now, for example, let's say I want to start trading right now today and I don't know what to trade, right? Uh, and I am a, we already have had all our um, economic data out for today and uh, we're well into the New York session. So this is the time that is, uh, we're expecting low volatility. So it's a good time to actually get into a long-term trade. Uh, I'm looking at pound dollar, the, the UK markets, uh, the Euro European markets have already closed. And as you can see, the pound dollar uh, has been developing this uptrend over here, right? Uh, so if I'm a long-term trader and if I have not already uh, identified this uptrend, and I want to uh, make a few pips, uh, I would analyze the markets from, the, from a technical point of view because we obviously don't have any more data coming up today. Uh, and uh, so from a technical point of view, I'm going to do a quick anal analysis based on the indicators and the chart patterns that I have right now. Uh, I'm going to show you. So we have the RSI indicator, which is the relative strength index. We have the Ichimoku uh, Kinkohio, which is also an indication. It's a moving average, it's a combination of five moving averages. We have the Bollinger Bands. I'm sorry for, these are the Bollinger Bands. Like we have three of them, the lower band, the middle band, and the uh, uh, the upper band, the middle band, and the lower band. And then we have the Fibonacci retracement levels. We have, I have, uh, dra I have um, drawn my Fibonacci uh, retracement levels from the beginning of the most recent downtrend, uh, which started back in uh, June. Uh, or July 2014 and went uh, all the way uh, through April. Now we're seeing a kickback and Fibonacci retracement is suggesting that we could see uh, more up moves towards the 50%. However, uh, so right now we're in a bit of a uh, dilemma because we have mixed signals. Why? Because the first reason why, even though the, the pair is trading above the Ichimoku cloud and the RSI is heading up, it has uh, reached the oversold down zone, right? So we have, uh, I'm going to tell you the bearish signals over here. So the RSI has reached the oversold zone, so that is a bearish signal for us. Uh, the pair is scratching the upper band of uh, Bollinger, of the Bollinger band, so that shows that the market, that the currency pairs, uh, because they do have a tendency to go to the middle of the, of the band, they might, we could see a retracement. But we have some bullish signals. The pair has broken above the 38% of a Fibonacci level. It is moving above the Ichimoku cloud. So my suggestion for a, a pound dollar trade, if you are a pound dollar trader, is that to wait. Uh, I, I could see the market to pull back a little bit towards 38% and then shoot back up to the 50%. If you don't know any of these, uh, 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 the meaning of the technical analysis that I just talked about, or if you have questions about fundamentals, uh, definitely do shoot us. Um, emails to info at orbex.com or info at investiva.com. If you want to learn more in a private lesson, definitely do come over uh, to investiva.com. Uh, sign up for a private webinar with me myself. Uh, we have a, a 100 uh, at Orbex. We have uh, around 30 videos um, uh, at, at their trading library that was actually presented and uh, produ produced by me. Uh, at Investiva.com, we have over 100 videos covering everything you need to know about technical analysis. So today we have only one minute left. I wanted to quickly thank you, everybody, for attending. Uh, if you have questions, obviously, uh, reach, out, reach out to us, invest responsibly, and I will hopefully see you in our next webinar. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a nice and wonderful day.